Good afternoon, everyone, or evening, or morning. I know we've got some people from uh, Australia where it's early morning, and in we have see Ireland and Germany and Belize. We've got several from Canada. So thanks for everybody for being with me and all over the U.S. as well. Um, somebody said they're finally going to get some rain at the end of the week. Let's hope if. If, uh, if you're out west, we definitely hope you get some rain. Alrighty, so today is going to be a little different than what we normally do. As you know, I always have everything ready to go, my textures picked out, and all that fun stuff, so I can just go through the projects. But today you're going to see me take an image and choose the textures live and kind of see what's my thought process and how I decide on textures. So I'm going to be sliding my texture folder over as I work so you can actually see what I'm looking at and um, and we're going to do it that way. It's a little bit different. So I did go ahead and pick some images to work on. Um, this is one you've seen me use in the blog in the last couple of weeks that I did throw on a couple of textures. Um, I'll start just so you can kind of see what I did here. We're not going to do editing and all the others but this was my original image and I made a couple tweaks and here I cloned out all the distractions there in the background um, and then I did a little what did I do here I made a few changes and masked it off of the flower I think I used luminar there and then did my merged layer and then I added two textures to this one and these are from the one of the newer background papers collections so this one it warmed it up a little more with the brown because brown tones are going to warm up your image um, and it has a little bit of like a linen kind of a uh, texture to it so it's very subtle and then I did this light gray one that just pulled down that brightness just a tad because the yellow was getting a little overpowering I thought so this one uh, by using a black and white added just a and these are very subtle textures in these cases so it's just one that I wanted to show you. So we're going to do a different one of the milkweed pods. Um, so that one I'm not going to save. And this one I took the same day. I think the other one's a better image, but just to kind of show you what we can do with some textures. So I, again, I've not looked at any textures or thought anything about what I want to use here. So I'm going to open up my other folder I have over here and I'm going to scooch it over. So this is um, a folder I set up actually more for Dave because I usually work with the textures right out of the folders that I set up for the website. But um, I have this set up so that Dave can use them um, as well without going into my, <laughs> my, my folders that I need to keep as is. So these first few we're not going to use. These are textures I've discontinued, some Dave's created. Um, these were bonuses for my ebook and a Pixello freebie and a survey freebie. So they're in here for him to use, but that's not what we're going to use. We're going to use everything else. So all of the rest of these are all of the textures that I have for sale. And this is what I tend to work with. Of course, I try and use my own as often as I can. So my process with this image, looking at it, is it has a fairly soft background, but it's kind of got some really contrasty spots like really darks and really lights it's not a real smooth bokeh background so I'm going to try and um, change that up with some textures so in this one I don't really want to do like a grunge look or anything but I'm looking for something that's going to help me even out this background a little and I'm going to then mask things off of the actual milkweed pod so I'm going to go in here and I know I, I don't want something, you know, like grunge because I don't want that heavy texture. So I'm going to go down to these new textured backgrounds and the subtle backgrounds are probably a good place to start. Maybe a watercolor. Those would all be very subtle backgrounds. And again, you, this applies to any texture you're using. Of course, I'm using my own, like I said, but any textures, you're going to kind of look for something that doesn't have a heavy actual texture it's kind of more about a subtle texture and some color. So because this has got some greens and yellows, I'm going to try and look for something in that color family. 
And um, I am going to probably jot a note or two as I go along because, as you know, I always have the notes ready for the webinars ahead of time, but because we're doing this live, I haven't done the notes yet. So <laughs> I'll be doing those tomorrow and getting them in the store for you because um, I know lots of you like to get those. So again, I'm scanning through, and when I'm working with textures, I don't pick one at a time. I'm going to drag a few in, um, and because I have, you know, I have these side by side. So even if you've only got one monitor, you can just make your texture folder a little bit smaller so you can see both the texture and the image. Normally, I have this other folder on my other screen, but you can also do it on one screen. And then I'm just going to drag in a couple of textures. And I'm just going to leave it here. And I'm even going to, uh, I could stretch them out, I guess. We'll move them. We'll make them to size. And then we're going to try them. Um, and as you know, I usually use more than one. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to just open up a few things. And then we're going to see how they work. So... I might even want something bright like that, maybe. And I, like I said, I, I open up a bunch of things so then I can kind of turn things on and off, try some different blending modes and see if I think they're going to work. And then let's see what else we have in here. So it's not always the quickest process in the world. So I'm going to go back a folder. So those are the textured backgrounds. Let's see what we've got in here. So I might want something with a little bit of an edge to it. I like these a lot of times because it's instead of adding a real vignette, you can use these little borders. Um, I like textures that have borders built in. So I'm just stretching these to cover the image and then reopening that folder. Let's see what we have in here. I might even want something with a light brown if I want to warm it up some. So again, your browns are going to warm up your images where blues and greens are going to cool it down. Um, so the yellows, oranges, browns are all going to be your warmer tones, reds even sometimes. All right, so I'm going to turn all of these off except the first one. So we'll start with that one. We'll highlight it. And I'm just going to start playing with some blending modes. And now I'm not worrying about what it's doing to the, the actual milkweed because we're going to mask it off. I'm really looking at the background. Um, and then once I try something, if I say, well, maybe I like it, I kind of look at the before and after and go, you know, do I really like that color? Do I like what it's doing there? That one's a maybe. I'm not 100% sold on that one. So we're going to turn that off for a second. Turn on the next one. Make sure you highlight that um, that you know row so to make that texture active. And then again, we might might try something like that. Maybe pull back on the opacity because we always can adjust those. So I've toned down the background just a little bit. And then that's when I start playing with more than one. Do they look good together? Um, let's see how things combine. You know, I might like one on top of the other more. This one I think has got a little too much blue in it for this particular image, so I don't think I'm going to use that one. Let's try the brown one. So this I might go with a soft light. And I have the green one still on. So again, it's like looking at the before. That might be a way to brighten it up, yet we've smoothed it out just a little bit. Um, and then we can always try adjusting the opacity. So we might want to pull the, a little more green in there. So we've got a little more consistency in color. There's still some darker spots, which I don't mind completely. I just thought without any texture, it was just way too contrasty in the background. So I'm going to try just one more. Let's put this one on the top. And let's see what this one will do. Now, when you have something that's got a lot of white in it like that, if you use the multiply blending mode, it's going to drop out that white and just keep the darker areas. So even though this one has some texture in the middle, we could always mask away some of that. Um, so we can, you know, maybe pull back. You want to go too far back because then your border is going to be 
gray rather than black. So I may even leave that up. And then I'm going to turn that one off for a second and that one. And let's do a little masking on this one. Uh, so we're going to add a layer mask. And I'm going to grab my brush, make sure I'm on a soft round brush, which would be your first one here if you have it open. It, this will show you like the last few you used as well. So you can grab it from either one. I'm going to make that much bigger. And I may want to lower the opacity of the brush a little bit. So I'm not taking all of the texture at once because you, you don't want it to be a sharp change between the edges and the subject. You, you want to kind of feather it in a little bit. So I'm going to start, make sure your foreground color is black. And just start taking most of it off. And then we'll work, we'll lower the brush opacity even more to kind of work with the edges a little bit. So this was a little tricky because of the, you know, just the way the hairs are like in the, the pods here. We don't want those to be real green, but yet we still want it to blend a little. So I'm trying to just kind of get the middle parts of it. And then I'm gonna change the opacity a little. So we were at about 77. So let me just jot that down one because I can pick up the names of the textures because I drag them in whatever they were named will show up on the layer so that makes it a little bit easier for me to know so I'm going to mask at 77 percent then at about let's go down about 30 or I usually you know if I want to be around 30 35 percent I'll just click in that area it doesn't have to be an exact number so now we're going to take less at a time and kind of blend a little bit more in here. So I'm trying to move quickly because I want to do a few projects for you. But, you know, when you're doing this on your own, you would definitely, you know, take the time to get this part exactly the way you want it. And I'm going to show you, you've probably seen me do this trick before of how to copy this mask to the other texture so you don't have to redo what we're doing right now. So we'll get this one done. And you can see how we can still see the hairs and but yet they're they're kind of blended in with the texture a little. And this is a, a good technique too when you're working with like animals um, with the feathers. Some people will actually put their image on top of the texture and mask it that way. That's another way you can go. It's kind of doing the same thing, but it, in reverse. Um, and sometimes with fuzzy kind of, you know, animals and things like that with the hair, that's a, a good way to blend things together. And I think that looks reasonably well. So, so the before and the after. So we've toned down some of that background a little bit. So now we're going to, this one I'm not going to use at all, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, Donna says, if you reduce the flow setting for the brush, you can gradually build up the color of the mask. Do you ever do this? Yes, I do sometimes, and that's a good point. Thanks, Don. Um, you can also reduce the flow of the brush, so that lets kind of let, oops, less of the, um, you know, the color flow. It, it just, it's like, the flow of the ink out of the pen kind of a thing. Um, so that also is a good way to, you know, blend things and, and have it be more subtle. And you can see it's going to do, you know, a lot less because we're really low on both numbers. So thanks, Don, because that's, that's a good point. You can play with both of those as well. And I'm going to show you that one second, Robert. Um, so that is our first mask. So now that that one looks pretty decent. We can turn on our brown. We might want to bring that opacity down a little bit because I don't want to get too bright because we just toned it down a little bit. But I like the way that it's kind of letting the yellows show around the flowers. It's brightening that area, but keeping the background consistent. But I do want to mask that off the flower. So to copy this mask, first you want to click in the layer mask. Just click one time in here so you get that line around it so you know it's active. 
Hold down on a PC your Alt key. On a Mac, it would be your Option key. Click and drag the mask. And that's it. It's copied. So you're going to select the mask, hold the Alt or Option key, keep holding that key down, click and drag. No, because I already did it. All right. And you can do that to as many different layers as you need. Now, say that I like this, but maybe I want it not to remove quite as much. You know, I want this to be a little more like gray over here. So it's taking a little less of that texture off of the flowers. If you want to change, basically, it's the opacity of the mask. If you double click in the mask, you get this properties box and you'll use this density slider because right now it's at 100%. If I pull that back, you're going to see this is getting grayer. So I've let a little bit of that texture on the flower more than what we had from the first one. So this one's taking pretty much all of the texture off where this is taking a little bit less of it off. So that's an easy way to modify the mask without having to recreate it. Especially if you've done something that's a really detailed mask, this is really handy. So then I'm gonna try this one. Again, I really don't want the as much of the, the kind of grungy stuff on here. So this one, I'm going to do a different mask. I'm going to add another layer mask. Go back to my brush. I'm going to leave my flow probably all the way, almost to the way up and bring my opacity pretty much all the way up, about 90, 91%. And I'm going to mask a lot of that grunginess away. So I'm just doing this over the whole thing and then come down. And if you want to leave some of it on, you can. For this one, I've decided I didn't want kind of the grunge look. I'm just looking for that little bit of a border there. So then you can do this. And then when I let go, you can kind of see where I, you can also see where you missed. Um, and then come back in. And some in the middle, and kind of like that. So we've just a little bit around the edges with the border. So I think my own density slider Jack just back today. <laughs> That's good, Beth. <laughs> um, you're welcome, Beth. Um, do I ever use luminosity mask panels or actions? I really don't. I have I actually have one of the Tony Kuiper panels, but I really haven't gotten into much of the luminosity stuff. It's not the easiest process. You really have to uh, concentrate on learning about that, and I just haven't had the time. Um, just <laughs> too many projects and not enough hours in the day. It was funny because I used to do this stuff part-time and work full-time up until like three years ago or four years ago when I got laid off from my full-time job. And it's like, how did I ever do all this <laughs> and work too? Um, this Dave used to say, he never saw me at night because I'd be in the office after dinner until 10, 11 o'clock at night working on stuff. But all right, so that's our first project. So I'm going to save this so that I can create the notes from it. And as always, with the notes, you'll get the images, and you're going to get all these textures I used. Um, and I'm going to do some bonus stuff for you, too. So let's save this one and name this. Get it in. And let's see. Why not invert the mask and just mask in the border? You could do that as well. Um, good point, Beth. Um, it, yeah, and, and that is a good, when you're doing something like this where you've masked most of it. So what she's saying, and I can show you that real quick. Let's delete this mask. So if you add the layer mask, and instead of a white mask and painting with black to black things out, because we're painting over most of the mask, we're just going to fill this layer with mask. So I'm going to do an alt backspace. So it would be option delete on a Mac. Make sure you've got the mask selected. And then you would take your brush, make your foreground color white, and then you can just mask in that edge. So that would be a little quicker way to go. I just didn't think about it at the moment. Um, trying to, you know, think of lots of different things at the time. <laughs>
but that's a good point because I, I do do this sometimes when there's when you're masking most of it away it makes it very quick so and you can see it's completely masked away again if you wanted to let a little of that show through you could always double click in the mask and lower it down it'll kind of blend it in a little bit more um let's see we'll be able to watch this again oh, absolutely all of my webinars are recorded every single one this is number 28 they're all recorded they're all on my youtube channel um the notes are all still available in the store if you want to ever go back and buy a set that you haven't gotten before um so you can um you know tomorrow it'll be posted it'll edit you know once it's done it processes through the zoom thing and downloads and then i go in in the morning and i just you know usually trim the beginning and the ends and um you know put my little intro slides and then i post it you know save it to the format and post it to youtube um probably this board i'll do that again with something else <clears throat> so we can, i want to get a couple projects in but i will we'll do that that process again all right that's a good question um and and people ask me that sometimes the difference between a texture and an overlay they're really the same i tend to think of a texture as something that's got a little bit more texture in it where an overlay i tend to think overlay is more like the gradients um or things that are really just dealing more with color um and not really changing you know the image with a texture but they really are pretty much the same thing because you're overlaying the texture onto your image so um they are pretty much interchangeable terms but that's a good question okay so we're almost a half hour in dave said so let me move on to the next one so let me just hit a save and i'll save this over the other one and we'll close that and then next one we're going to do a i'm going to open this church one let this finish saving all right this one was a cell phone image that i've resized and i did some editing you know this was my original from the cell phone not a great image the sun was in a really bad position um <clears throat> so i did some luminar and um and cleaned this up so that is where we're going to start with so let's take a look at some texture so this one i old buildings and the barns and like old trucks and cars i tend to want to go with more of the more grungy vintagey kind of a look i think it just fits with this image i mean something pastel on here isn't going to really work for me um this was somewhere in this was north carolina right babe yeah last december or the beginning of the month we had some timeshare points to use and we stayed in sapphire north carolina and this was somewhere around there we drove to the top of a mountain to an overlook and found this on the back road coming down um it's one i'd probably never find again but it was really cool um i think we took a picture of a street sign so we could could probably find it on a map but it might take a little doing um all right so let's look at our texture so now instead of working with these more pastel ones now i'm going to go towards my more grungy ones and i know i've got some under grunge um my where else would i might look even if i want to stick with black and gray i have a set of just black and grays um so let's start with grunge because i've got lots of grunge textures we've got eight different sets here i want to start with the newest one and these are yes dave says they're all available in the store so if you really like them <laughs> um and let's see so i kind of like to sort of see the image with it but we're working different today so i might use something like this that's got a little more texture in it we're going to try it i'm just going to drag it in like i said i like to drag in a few and then these i'm going to end up rotating because i've got a vertical so when you start rotating you can go into image uh, to edit transform or you can just put your cursor outside the corner to get that curved arrow and just start dragging it and if you hold your shift key it'll move in 15 degree increments so it'll end up straight except i didn't start doing it that way 
Um, so it's a little bit off, but we got it back. Uh, but if you hold your shift key, yeah, when you start doing that, it'll go in 15 degree increments. So it'll end up coming out straight, which is nice and handy. Um, so let's do that one. So now I'm looking at more of maybe the brown tones or maybe a darker blue or green, you know, based on the colors in the image. I may even bring in something like that. So I'm holding my shift key and you can see now it's going to move easier and stay lined up when I get it rotated. And then let's go back one. Let's see what we've got in this dark grunge folder. And maybe this one. I said it's just it's easier I find for me to open a bunch of things and then be able to just turn things on and off and try them rather than bringing them in, you know, as I go. But if I don't, you know, if there's stuff that I don't like and I want to try something else, I, I definitely will, you know, go back and bring in some more. But this is a, it's a good way to get started, I think. Uh, hmm, not what I want for this one. I don't think I'm going to want pastels, but we'll take a quick look. Maybe I'm bringing one of the blue ones. Well, we got one blue. <clears throat> um, okay, so these are some nice grungy ones. Number seven, Dave says. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I have used that one quite a bit. I like that rusty one. I actually use this in one of my camera club seminars on a project. All right, so let's start with these four and see what we get. So we'll turn off the first ones. We'll start here. So you can see again, you know, the, the multiply is going to really darken it up, and then you can always pull it back with your opacity. Um, so um, looking at a couple questions. So yes, Danell, Danell, they did extend that escape motions promotion. Uh, I don't know what the, the new expiration date was going to be. They did extend it a few days. And um, if anybody's interested in the Rebel and other programs that they create, <clears throat> they're all on sale for just $10 a program, which is a steal. And I did get them. Um, if you're using your phones with Google Maps, you go back. Yes, I, I, we can, and I, I do do that sometimes, and then sometimes I, I'm not sure if I have it on or not. But <clears throat> good point. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so let's try this one and pull it back about halfway. And again, I always like to, you know, turn them on and off, see if I like what it's doing. I kind of like that. It's turning it down, giving some depth to here. You can always mask a little bit off of here. Um, so let's see what the blue one does. And I tend to go more with the, the multiply darker, you know, darker ink darkening <laughs> blending modes. These will all darken the effect. These are all going to lighten that effect. <clears throat> And these are going to work with your midtones. So, like overlay and soft light, or, or soft light is always, you know, your most one of your more subtle ones. And you, that's blue is going to add some nice color to the sky and kind of cool it down a little bit more. So we might use that one. Um, so let's see what this one does. I think this one might get too dark. Overlay. Actually, soft light on that one may not be bad either. I kind of like what it's doing for the the like leaves in the sky. It's adding some nice depth to the clouds here. And when I'm doing things like this, I'm looking at colors that I like, not necessarily natural colors, but the way I think it will, you know, give a nice effect to the image. 
Um, yep, good idea, dear. Sometimes there is one side of the texture that might, maybe the spot is a little darker in the lower right, and you can rotate it so that's up here if you want that area darker. So you can always, you know, play with turning your textures, especially like this green one here. It's much lighter on the upper right and darker on the lower left. So that's one you can definitely play around with. You can either rotate it or you could flip it horizontally. Like if I wanted this dark area in that upper left corner, do a flip horizontally or a flip, or I mean vertically or horizontally if you wanted to go to the other side. So that's another way of, you know, playing around with the textures as well. But again, I, I like to kind of start with this and then, you know, fine tune it as you go through it. Um, Pat says blending two textures using a gradient mask works well too. Yeah, if you wanted it to be darker on the sky and lighter on the bottom, I can. that's a good point, Pat, and I can show you that. That might be a good thing to do with this. Let's try this green one next. So I'm going to put the darker area at the top. So I'm going to go to edit transform and the reason i'm going edit transform is because i only want to change this one layer not the whole image so it's only going to transform this layer and i'm going to flip it vertically so now we've got that dark area up here where our sky was and then if we go in and probably do yeah, maybe the soft light and this would be a good one to kind of add some color to the sky without maybe changing it down here, because I kind of like it like that. So I may pull back the opacity a little, and then we can add our layer mask and add a gradient. And the way we would do that is over here on the left, grab the gradient tool, make sure you're on your mask, and you're gonna wanna choose um, a black to transparent, so that will be like under your basics usually. You want, um, let's look, if I have one here. Um, you want it like this, like black to transparent because we want it to be, um, no, actually I want black to white because I want to block it down here. So I take that back. We're gonna use the black to white one. We're gonna try that. So we want to go, yeah, the foreground to background, and we can flip those. So let's go, okay, oops, okay, okay. And let's flip that and see if I'm still in the right direction here. I'm gonna go back to my gradient. Yeah, so we're gonna go from black to white because it's foreground to background. So I'm going to put my cursor at the top and then I'm going to pull, if I hold my shift key, it's going to draw a straight line. And that's going to let me adjust that. And it didn't work. How come it didn't work? I don't do a lot of gradients on masks, but um, let's see. We're doing our gradient. We're in our mask. We're black to white. Okay, Pat, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Pat Rec is our friend out in Arizona, and she's great when I'm doing so. Oh, that's right. Do it on the photo, not on there. Okay, so let's get rid of the mask. I was thinking you could mask it too, but that's true. All right, so let's get rid of the layer mask. And we're going to do it on an overlay. Do it, on, yeah, on a blank layer. I was saying I can't do it on the texture. So we'll do it on a blank layer. We'll reset this to black and white. And let's draw that down. And then we're going to change the blending mode to multiply. And then bring that way back. So you can see that it's, once we're done, and we can clip it to this layer to only have it affect that one um, texture. So if you hold down your Alter Option key, and put your cursor between the layers and clip it. So now this um, gradient is only affecting this texture. So then you can go back and fine tune. Um, say that again, dear. 
only if I move the layer. You see, no, it would, might unclip it if I do something else, but only that's only if I move this layer like in the order. So now this texture has been masked um, with a black to white mask. So it's it's working like a mask, but it's not really masking it. It's using the gradient as a mask. And you can see if it's just darkening that top just a little bit as I turn it on and off the before and the after. So then it leaves the bottom as is. It's just like a mask. If it's white, it's not doing anything. And if it's black, then it's hiding part of that texture. Uh, why is there a prominent blue vertical line or bright blue on the top right edge? That's a good question. It's probably the way, hmm, maybe I didn't stretch the texture all the way. It's probably the original image. Maybe this one I didn't stretch. Let's see. Um, yeah, hmm, that's weird. Hmm. Yeah, it must be something when I, that one's fine. It must be the that texture, that's the one. <clears throat> I didn't uh, drag it far enough. There we go. All right, so we can turn that back on, that back on. And that. Thank you. So if I click over here, yep, it's gone. I didn't quite stretch that texture far enough. Thanks to know. All right. So I kind of like that one. So and now once you've you've gotten these on here, you can try switching things around at times or turn things on and off and see, okay, I kind of like it better with it to darken that down. I like the texture that it adds to the clouds. Hold on, I have to cough. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to cough in everybody's ear if I can help it. <clears throat> um, and then we can try this one. Again, I, I like the warmth it's giving. So we're kind of almost contradicting ourselves because we've got a warm texture, a cool texture, and a warm texture, and a cool texture. But I think they work well together. And that's why sometimes you just have to try these things because, as you can see, I don't know exactly what might work together. Maybe, you know, one would have looked really bad and I wouldn't have liked it at all. But I kind of like the way those look. And our, our, we go back again to our, um, basically our Luminar version was, was what I adjusted colors with. And I knew this sky was too bright here, but I couldn't pull anything back more because it was a cell phone image. It's not a raw file. And so we warmed it, had a little bit of coolness, but then brought more of that warmth and a little bit of texture. And then I think that one adds some nice color. I wouldn't do a border on this one because it was cut really, and this is the way it was shot. I didn't crop this. It was just a really tight shot from where I was standing. Um, it was, there were some signs over next to it on the driveway saying no trespassing, so I tend to not want to hang around very long, but I did want to grab a couple quick shots because I thought it was a really cool building. So that's number two. Can you shoot in raw on a phone? You can. Um, Lightroom for the phone has a raw app, and there are some other raw plugins. Um, I tend to kind of not think about it when I'm shooting, but I probably should. I have an, an older iPhone. I have an 8 Plus, so mine is not as um, I don't know, sophisticated as the newer ones. I am thinking of upgrading, but I'm kind of... I'm going to wait till around the holidays and see what happens. Um, a friend of mine who just went to Africa a month or so ago, and she said she was amazed at the picture. She has the new, she has a 13, um, the plus, 13 plus, and just was amazed. She says, I think some of the pictures on there are better than what I got on my camera with the big lenses and all that. So um, definitely the way of the future. All right, so let's do, I think we'll have time for one more. So this is an, another older building. This is one of the houses we shoot on um, my Barnes and Back Roads workshops. And you can see with this one, let's turn that off. 
whoops, turn that one on. Um, this was the original shot, and I used Luminar to, I changed the sky on this one, because I thought that one was, eh, just kind of boring. Even though there was a little bit of color in it, I didn't like the way the clouds were falling. <clears throat> so I used that to kind of tone it down, give it a kind of more mysterious look. Um, we have permission to go on this property, not in the building, but up around it. And it's a, a long curving driveway up to it. So it's a pretty cool place to shoot. They have been talking about tearing down this house. Uh, it's been in their family for several generations, but it's beyond the ability to repair it. It would just cost way too much, unfortunately. But luckily, they haven't done it yet. <laughs> so I still get to take people there um, and photograph it. So let's try, let's look at what else we have in our grunge, maybe that we haven't used yet. Uh, let's see. Again, this is, this is part of the process. This is the part I find fun, you know, kind of trying things, um, you know, just, looking at what you have in your library. Um, I started to put my textures into a library, but I've got so many of them that I really was taking too much space in my Adobe thing, and I'm not buying more space to put my textures in there. So I find it just as easy to work with them like this. Um, so we got our Procreate ones. I do love using the black and white ones um, as well because it does add that texture without changing the color. Um, yeah, the, the iPhone 14s are out. Um, I know Lisa said she wasn't going to upgrade her 13 to a 14 because they were very similar. But if, if you've got something a lot older, from what I've read in multiple places, that it, it would be worth it if you have an older one. <clears throat> but I don't think they're a, a huge difference at this point. I'm going to try this one. So let's try that. So this might be one that we like. I'll try that one. And back here. think I'm really going to want watercolors. Let's see what we got in this one again. I do like um, some of these that I kind of did a gradient on that can also work with certain images. Um, I'm going to bring this one in just for the heck of it. Let's see what that will do. What was that, dear? Make faster decisions. Well, it's a process. You can't go too, too fast. We've got 15 minutes, so we've got some time. <laughs> um, let's see. This is one I use a lot. This was a set, the last three um, Decembers, I've done a free set of textures kind of in the red green gold silver theme um and they're free for like the month of december and then they go into the store so if you've missed any of the old ones you can still get them this one i use a lot it, it's great for a very subtle texture on a sky and it does have a darker area here so i most often rotate this one so we're going to bring that in just so you can kind of see what it will do and i'll definitely rotate that one um, so I'm going to do this because it does have a little darker spot there at the bottom. But I do use this one quite often. It just It's one of those ones that just works a lot. And my Cosmos ones I use a lot. So let's look at those. Oops, let's just go down here. Um, so we have, yeah, I've done it in three years so far. And there's some really cool ones in here. And they're great 
you know, like I said, there you get the silvery grays and and the greens, and they're good to create backgrounds for holiday cards if you want. Now we got some bokeh. Um, besides warm and cool textures and adding texture, do you add textures by color to bring out certain colors in your images? Yeah, you definitely can, and that's why I'm, I'm kind of, um, in this case, I'm probably not trying to draw out a color. That would be, that's really important with like um, a flower, more so than even the, our, our milkweed pod that we did, but like if you had a, say a purple rose, you might want to do a background that complements that or that's a lighter shade of that um, color. I often will do that with flowers. Um, <clears throat> so that's a good question. Yeah, you definitely can um, do that as well. Um, let's look at our Cosmos ones. These I, I love, it, even though they're kind of like sky-ish sort of things, they work in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to bring one, a couple of these in. I just love the, the way these came out and the subtle gradations and textures in them. They're some of my favorites. These are great when you have a, a kind of blah sky to add some interest to it. And there's lots of different colors in here. I might even bring in a darker brown. So let's start with these and kind of see where we go. Right. Where do you post it? You will get, um, they, they go out in the blog and in the newsletter um, and there'll be a link. You'll download them just like any of my other, like the Sunday samplers. Um, and they'll be available uh, from whenever I get them posted. It, they probably won't be out at the beginning of December because we're going to be away for a couple weeks at the end of November into the beginning of December. But it'll probably be about three weeks that they're available until after the holiday. I'll probably keep them up till the end of December since they are come out a little bit later this year. Um, but yeah, so watch the, the blog and the, the newsletter for that info. I have not created those yet, so we shall see what we end up with. So again, there's our multiply. Multiply is, if you ever watched any of my older webinars and stuff, I always talk about the blending modes that you use most often. And that would be blend, um, multiply, lighten, which we haven't really needed today with these, and then the overlay, soft light, and hard light. Those tend to be the five that you'll use probably 90% of the time. Um, sometimes I do like the darken or even a linear burn I use on occasion or color burn if you're really trying to draw that color in. Obviously that's way too much on this particular one. Um, again, you know, you try your blending mode and then pull back on that exposure or opacity, sorry. And then turning it on and off, you can see it's just toning down the brightness of this image, not adding a whole lot of color. So that might be a good one. Um, let's see what this one does. Multiply is going to really, you know, pop the blue. And then I picked this one because it had the <clears throat> more yellow color to kind of fall where the grass does. So a, a tip too, if you... Let's lower this just a little bit. So I say we like this, and I'll probably lower the opacity more, but I want this yellow is kind of in the middle of this texture, and I want it to be more just on the grass. You are not limited to making the texture the size of your image. If you hold down your shift key, you can unconstrain the proportions and then just pull it down further so that more of that yellow is at the bottom. So in this case, you may want to make it back to normal so you can kind of see it better. And you can see where that yellow is now breaking right about there. So you don't have to keep the texture constrained just to the image. I often will do that, especially with borders. Maybe you like a border, but it's a little too thick. You just want something right on the edges. You can always stretch it out um, so that that will will work. 
So let's then go back to our, what does overlay do? Overlay is going to brighten it. Soft light and hard light are, are going to bring in too much. Sometimes hard light will really bring in a lot of the color like that and not blend it as well. Let's turn it on and off. So there's the before, there's the after. Let's turn that one off for a minute. So you can see this one makes it very bright compared to our original, All right? So that's no texture that one, but if we keep that brown one on, that kind of pulls down that brightness, but lets us modify the color a little bit. It adds a little more blue to the sky um, if you want it to be less of that um, kind of really darkish gray color. It adds a little more blue. I probably would take some of this off of the house because it's adding a little too much blue there. So let's, um, let's bring that down just a hair more. Add a layer mask, grab our brush, make that a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna show you another little quick tip. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. So we've got a straight roof, right? It's hard to draw a straight line. So if we make our brush a little smaller and I've got my black foreground, I'm gonna click it at the beginning of this line, and I'm gonna go a little bit beyond the roof line because it is a softer brush. So I'm gonna click once, then push my Alter Option key. I'm sorry, not the Alt key, the Shift key. After you've clicked the first one, click the Shift key, and then keep holding the Shift and click the End. And it just connected those two points. You can see now I have a nice straight line there. And you can do the same thing like all the way around this house and just keep holding the shift. I'm not letting go. I'm just until I want to move the key, you know, move my cursor, but I can just keep doing that. So the reason this is kind of getting brown now is because we have that browner texture. So we'll probably copy this layer mask to that as well. And then you can just kind of fill it in freehand with your brush. That's a awesome tool to draw a straight line. I use it all the time and it works with any brush. Um, doesn't matter if it's a round brush or any whatever else that you might be using. And I'm just gonna kind of get some of this off of the white area. I'm not taking all of that. And then I'm gonna copy this, hold that, click, make sure you're on the mask, which we are. Hold the Alt key, click and drag. So now we've taken off most of the texture from both of these layers. So it's changing the house only slightly. So that would be that one. And let's try this one. So this one I would probably try at soft light. And, let's bring, and maybe I decide I don't like this one. Um, and then turn it on and off. Yeah, I'm not sure I really like that one. So I'm going to leave that one off for now. Let's try one of our Cosmos. Got to make sure you highlight the right row. Not sure I like that one either. I think it's too light a texture and it's lightening it up a little bit too much. Let's try this other one first. You can try different blending modes, but I, I've I think those are too dark a little bit. Um, so, well, let's try blend multiply because I think soft light is still a little bit too bright. It's it's losing detail. So let's try our multiply. I use multiply a lot and then pull it back a little and let's see what that one did. I like that. I like the way it, it's darkening it but not making it too, too, you know. Um, yeah, and Dave's making comments. He's but it's your project, and and you may like textures that are completely different than these, and that's okay. That's what makes it fun is you create your own vision. But this is just to give you an idea of what I look for when I'm starting. Um, let's see if we can find something that will add a little bit of grunge to this. I may use. You know what I'm going to try? I'm going to use one of my um, brushes. So we're going to. Add a blank layer. Um, 
Don says, I often use this technique with the healing or spot healing brush when removing distractions. Yes, the, the joining the straight line, absolutely. Um, you can use it with the healing brush, um, for sure. I use that a lot. Um, you can use it with, with a lot of the different tools. So thanks, Don. Um, yes, thank you, Jim. Um, all right, so I added a blank layer. So I'm going to go up to my brush menu. And I'm going to go down to some of my brushes, which are, I just added a bunch recently when I was doing something and now I can't find them. where they all go. Uh, I'm sure I went right by them all. There they are, Meredith images. Okay, so I went right on by them. So I have grunge overlays and then I have the grunge borders that have some texture in the middle as well. I'm going to try one of these with a little bit of a border. Um, let's try this number two. So I'm looking for some texture in the middle. Um, this edge is going to become my, my darker border. So let's try that one. So we're going to double click it. My foreground color is black, but I don't really want black. I'm going to choose a dark brown. I'm going to click once I open my color picker you can move your cursor over the image to choose a color from here. So it's like it's going to be an almost black. Let's try something in there, but more of a dark brown. And you can always change that after the fact too. Say OK. <clears throat> and I'm going to make my brush um, almost the size of my image. Line it up with the upper left corner. Make sure my brush opacity and flow, you want these at 100% because we can always pull back on it, but you can't make them darker later. Click once, then do our move tool. That will give us the handles. Hold my shift key and stretch this out. So this is one that's got a little bit of a wider border so we can stretch that up and out a little bit so we get a little less of that border. And then again, work with the blending modes. So this one I might do, probably would go with the one of the darkening ones. Kind of actually like that on this one, the darker color. So it's not as heavy. And again, adjust your opacity. Um, these also come as PNG files as well as brushes in this set, so you can drag in the PNG if you prefer that way. It can, gives you pretty much the same result. Um, and you can change the color of those too. So like if I wanted to change this color a little bit, say I wanted a maybe a little darker brown or a lighter brown or whatever, even though I, I've got it done, click on your color picker again. You can, let's go a little warmer brown like that. Say OK. So I want to fill this with the color, but I want to keep the transparent pixels transparent. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and do my alt backspace that fills the layer on a Mac that would be shift option delete. And it changed that color. So I put the color on the pixels that have color, but not on the ones that don't. So the transparent area stayed transparent. So that gives it a little more of that vintagey feel, I think. Um, and I like that one. I think that came out pretty cool. I like the little, I like the borders on some of these older images. I don't know, or to give it that older look. Um, Thank you, Jean. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks, Beth. Yep, we're we're just about at the at the wrap now. We're at five o'clock. I'm gonna um, just to remind you, and I, let me save this one before I forget. And I'm gonna leave in even the textures we didn't use. I'll give you guys those as well on this one. So it's saved. <laughs> yeah, I like that vintagey look for stuff like this. I don't know. It just kind of fits the subject for me. Um, and like I said, I'll have the notes up tomorrow in the store. 
um, tomorrow's Wednesday, so the blog will go out as well. So the link will be in the blog, as well as the link to the recording. And you'll also get the, the auto email from Zoom, um, and I'll put the link in there, so you'll get that as well. Um, thank you, Don. Well, one of the best you've ever presented. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, and hopefully that gives you a little bit of the insight of kind of what I think about. And, you know, we all look at things differently. So just try the different textures and see what they do. That's the best way to learn, you know, so you have that kind of an idea of where to start when you do get to that point. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here again. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you all really soon. Watch your emails tomorrow for all the links. Thanks.